All right, it's question time. Off you go. So on the last level two, mm. you uh, did the row your boat. Mm. Is uh, a technique that I think you described it as there was something you felt was missing from the lumbar QL iliacus connection. Something, something didn't seem quite right for you and you came up with this to help release it. Is there anything where you feel what well, the way the technique is is good but there is something missing from a point that you just haven't quite got yet or something that you're you're working on um that you think can work better so so when we're talking about the row your boat um with the row your boat the the addition was was then putting them into prone and then going on each segment so you remember that that was the combo and and so so the row your boat was always there and um and 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 the, and the making sure each segment was working but what what we've always got to bring in as a as a thinking is when we're doing something and and, and so well, let, let me track back to to the sewers and so if we go back and we quote Ida Rolf and we say, and Ida Rolf said, when the psoas flexes the hip, it lengthens and falls back upon itself. What she, what she was saying was when, when the distal psoas, the end of the psoas flexes the hip, the proximal part needs to lengthen in order for the psoas to function fully. But if you say, well, what are, what, what's the prerequisite then for that lengthening? Well, any structures that are going to stop the lumbar spine lengthening will be a problem. The QL is definitely one of them. Uh, lockdown abdominals can be another. Um, so there are a whole lot of structures, but also what can happen is, let's say your, your, your tinier muscles, your multifidies, your smaller muscles, actually over time have locked that, locked that um, lumbar spine rigid. So the lumbar spine has not moved. So we've, we've kind of cleared the muscle structures, but the physical skeletal structures still have a whole lot of tissue that's never really moved. And so if we say, all right, so we've, we've now connected all the dots. So the neurology is all ready and waiting. What's the limiting factor? And, and, and so if, if I were to change it into something else, that, that's kind of like going, um, we test your quad, and, and let's say we test both quads, they both fail. When we check the patella, the one's moving, the other's not. So we say, all right, well, we'll, we'll do the Peter Pan points, the initial um, activations. And the left one, where the patella was moving, fires beautifully. But the, the right one doesn't. And you go, oh, what's wrong with the technique? There's nothing wrong with the technique. There are structures going on in that patella that are holding it, binding it down where we need to go to next, which is why we go down there. So if we take that same kind of a thinking, so the minute the, the structures that bind the patella are gone, the patella can move freely. If I just went to the patella and mobilized and moved the tissue, which is what we're trained to do in physio and a lot of other techniques, let go, go there. Well, the quad still isn't switched on neuro neurologically, so therefore you're wasting your time, and that's why we have so many patellofemoral dysfunctions that stay dysfunctions. You know, hey, let's tape it, let's do this, let's do that. No, 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 you're missing the point. The quad itself can't fire correctly because the neurology patterning is wrong. So we get the patterning right, and then often that patella will move a little bit but then we need to do more to make sure it really is moving. Once it's moving, the body just goes, woo, geez, and feels like a racing car and off you go. Now, now imagine you take that idea and you take it to the lumbar spine. And you say that lumbar spine is like the patella that's not moving. And so we need to go and check segments. And, 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 and it's not like perfect OMT, you know, for anyone who who's been on my courses, you know, I'm, I'm quite brutal on the OMT. Um, and, 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 but, but it's okay, because it still has value and it still has a place. And, and just so we're all very clear with Mr. Maitland's greatest skill was not teaching you a C1, uh, on, on C1, a PA grade one, you know, if your nail changes color, you're pressing too hard. Um, his gift 
was his ability to interview. His gift was his ability to assess a client so well that he knew exactly what they needed. So when he brought an intervention, it was always the right intervention. That was his skill set. But so we want to say, we've tested this, this is going, things are moving better, but what's the limiting? So if the proximal psoas has to expand, the lumbar spine has to expand too. So anything that's going to stop it. So when we do the row your boat and we unlocking the relationship between the iliacus and the QL. So now the QL is not holding that lumbar spine tight and you go, well, it's better, but it's not there yet. Why is it not there yet? Because there's other things that are locking that, that, that lumbar. And so as we find ways to mobilize that, and kind of an extension of that would be so, so once, once we know that that lumbar spine can all move, and, and again, if we did it the other way around, let, let's say we went, oh, I heard Doug say the lumbar spine has to move. So I am going to go straight to the lumbar spine and I'm going to start mobilizing. We would say, hey, thank you for, so we, why do we say that would be silly? Because it's a sequence, it's an order. Re, re, um, release the structures that are locked down and binding and, and driving inwards first, then everything else becomes easier. Otherwise, it's just a fight against structures that aren't going to let go because they go, listen, dude, I can't let you move that lumbar spine because we need, we're locking up to be the psoas because the psoas ain't working. And so in all of this, we're actually unlocking the psoas as well. You know, the whole idea is the psoas. And, if, and the more the psoas fires, the more the breathing works. So therefore, the breathing fires down and it's this, it's this wonderful magic mix. I feel like if I, if I were an artist, I would have all this the messy colors all over and look at this and that, and it all comes together. But, but when you step back, you go, wow, that's an amazing piece of art. And that's what we are. We're an amazing piece of art. But, but it's amazing how, how, can, how can someone create amazing art and someone can have the exact same tools and create crap you know I, I i don't know but i guess it might be the way you use the tools and the order and the way you think about art <laughs> but and the sad thing is 90 percent of what's out there is crap and yet your body my body it's exceptional you know you're paralympian how friggin amazing can we stop for a moment to go when I pull up my foot that's no longer there, then my body can do this. We shouldn't be going, oh, well, that's too weird. No, we should be going, that's absolutely insanely amazing. You know, they, 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 there are things, studies out there where they're doing virtual reality stuff with um, paraplegics. Where, so the, the, the spinal cords cut and, and the brain is seeing their leg go up and down and up and down. And, and the more they train, the more they're getting flickers. They're not getting total, but they're getting changes because the mind is believing and then the, the rest of the system starts to find a way. You know, we have a neuroplasticity and a neural plasticity that, that people don't fully understand the extent of how amazing it is. And, 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 and so we anything can change i was about to say we can change anything but that sounds like i'm saying this will no we as human beings can change anything and sometimes that requires a thought to change a perspective to change huh wow you know it, 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 this, and 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 as you change that everything can change and and so as we work through the sequence and we look at it from a different perspective you know, so, so one of the things that's important to say is that once, once we've got that, that, that lumber moving freely, well, then that proximal psoas can wake up and do all beautiful, crazy things too. But we also want to make sure that that sacrum has flow and movement because imagine it's like a golf swing. So, you know, in your kinematic sequence that everyone likes to talk about and you should go here, here, here. And basically they're talking one, two, three. They just didn't realize it at the time. Um, but, but imagine that it's just energy flowing through the body. So any place where structures are collapsed, locked down, the energy flow, the, the energy of movement can't flow through. So imagine now you, you've got your lumbar spine moving, but as it gets to the sacrum and the, the sacroiliac joint and the, the energy to the pelvis, there's a 
it's it, it, it's it's off because it's just lost its rhythm and flow. Why? Because it's all being collapsed. And so we can mobilize that in a very generalized way. But I want to feel a sacrum that just has a ah like a flow, and I, it's a sacral pump, and 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 not a sacred pump, although it probably could be too. But a, a sacral pump, and when you sacral pump, what you're doing is you're moving spinal fluid as well. And often that's a spinal fluid that's been in an area that's locked down. So therefore, it never really gets refreshed. So now you've got spinal fluid, which is really useful if your spinal fluid is fresh and clean and bringing good nutrients to your nerves because it makes the nerves better, healthier, more effective, more plastic. Yeah. And so it allows that possibility for the body to feel and see and do things differently. So in that, is there anything a different way to kind of add on to that is there anything you've discovered or over the last year where you think do you know what this this might work better we need to add something in to the treatments or the sequence that um i i i would say i'm going to answer that based upon what you shared earlier with your swimmer getting in the pool going into that starting position so i i would say um it's, it's, it, it's something that, that, that I think is important is to consider the different positions to do activations in. So, so you know, it, it's like you look at what your client requires. And so if they get 80% on the table, okay, awesome. How can we do the same thing? I don't know, in sitting. Could we do it in standing? And I'm saying, I don't know. Could, could, could we do it? Could, yeah, so this is, this is where you, you see you've got a good thing going here. So could we do it standing in the bungee, doing a row your boat and mobilizing the lumbers? And, and just, just so that I'm doing a, a good sales pitch because you, don't, you, you haven't got one. Um, the activation tool is actually, that's one of the things we've got people doing. They're standing against the wall and having it mobilize the lumbar spine while they're doing hip flexion. Just one of the things, one of the many amazing things that has come from the activation tool. And it's just because it's like, the question is, so it's great if we can do these things um, with our clients, but it's also great if we can do a lot more of those things for ourselves. And then, of course, if I can do it for myself, then I can actually teach my clients to do it for themselves too. And, and, and so that, that's kind of where it comes from. But, but I think it's always about tracking back and dropping back into why am I doing this in the first place? And a lot of times people kind of get lost in that. They get so busy in the what else, what else, that they go, that you forget the, the goal of the game, lumbar spine must move. So proximal psoas can lengthen while I'm hip flexing. And, 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 and so if, if you go, okay, so that's what we're trying to do, then if someone's going, well, I don't think you should do that. Cool. Don't go beyond that thing. Don't go looking for an, everything else you're doing until you get clear and have a level of agreement that this is what the sewers should be doing. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and so it, it's always a thing that I say over and over, don't take my word for anything, you know. It's, it's, you can see the madness, the craziness is there. I'm, I'm an idea fountain <laughs> and not all good stuff comes out, by the way. Um, it, and, 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 but the thing is that stuff comes up and then we have to test it. Why? That's what I, you know, I test it. So we, we find willing guinea pigs, we test. Usually it's me, but otherwise someone else. And if it fails, we apologize. Or we bury them in the back garden or we, you know, uh, uh, in my new t-shirt by the way it's got both waves and lion um it's quite an amazing thing people should be excited i actually have new t-shirts um, <laughs> um but but you know so, so it's like in africa we've got the sharks in the water and the lions on the beach so you know feed feed, feed the failures to them and get on with it it's like if you have new ideas, you've got to test them. If they work, then you then you see if you can replicate that. And if they don't work, you go, okay, awesome. I had an idea, and you put it down, and you see what the next one is. And I think this is this is the cool part of of learning. And you know, so much of my learning before was learning on clients and with clients and having ideas. And obviously, just like you, 
I'm not teaching. I'm not in that one-to-one -one environment much anymore. And, and so all the learning at the moment is happening on me. And, you know, I, I, I think that's partly why, why I am a bit crazy today. You know, it's, it, it's like I wasn't feeling great. And I, and I realized that that's not what I want to bring. And, and so I did something that I know works. And I got in my bungee and I did movement that kind of triggered stuff. I even tried putting a, a weird wobble board um, in my garage. But the problem was because it's plastic and on the garage floor it just slipped. So I nearly fell on my face too. So it, it, you know, it, it, it's like, whereas when I do it outside, it's a different thing. So, so like every, change the environment, change the risk, you know, it, but, but, but all of these things are about how do we bring ourselves back to us and from there view the world and from there, look at what the possibilities are. And from there, you realize you've got all the answers already. And, and so when you, when you sit and here today and you know that the answers you seek, you already have them. You just have to find them here. That's so awesome. There's no place you've got to go. You just got to investigate and take that three-year-old with you because that three-year-old is going to ask the kind of questions that the adult Stephen will not ask. And, 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 and so that's what's where, where the funkiness is. And, and, and maybe that's why I've always have so many ideas because I've got like 55 different age groups running in my head. Um, maybe, I don't know, but, 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 it, but, it, but it's like to, to kind of find something, go, wow, this is amazing and appreciate and take ownership of something we've done and then go, I wonder what else there is. It's not about shifting the goalposts quickly. It's about saying, so, so now that we know this, I wonder what else there is. And, and, and I think this is the, the, the magic. The possibilities are huge. You know, if we, if we stay open to this is the answer that we have in the moment. And I wonder what's beyond that. And sometimes beyond is that way. And sometimes beyond is to the left or the right. Or, and, and realizing that, you know, I've, I've said this for the, all, all the time that I'm teaching, you know, when, when people ask questions, you, you make me think about my processes differently. So it's, it's kind of like I'm holding this and I go, here's my glass and da, da, da. And you go, so Doug, what does your glass look like from underneath? What? Oh, wow. I haven't done that yet. Thanks, Steve. And, and then I go, look, and now I've got to describe it and find that language. And, and, and so it's, it's as we get better at this work and as we get better at life, we find our level of comfort on describing the glass from any perspective, you know, it's, it's, and, 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 and that, and that's the mastery. The mastery is the, the, the kind of the comfort to, to change it to any language, to any way, because, because you understand the base principles and the base philosophy that drives it. Hoo -ha! <laughs> Uh, I feel sorry for the world that I'm going out into today. They get me. <laughs> They're all the better for it. So oh, I don't know. I, 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 think, I think sometimes when, when people are trying to be sad and miserable and, um, and feel sorry for themselves, you know, have you not, do you not know the next tragedy going on? What are they going to do next? And, and, and then I come and I go, yeah, whatever. Um, with this energy, I, I'm, 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 I'm what uh, Wayne Dyer would have uh, called the scurvy elephant, which is the disturbing element. <laughs> it is a, he has a great story about that of, of um, coming home, home from school after overhearing his teacher and, his, and the principal talking about him. And he said to his mom, they said I'm a scurvy elephant. <laughs> So he used used that language, but but actually he was being a disturbing element. So I'm I'm happy to say I'm certainly a, happy to be a scurvy elephant too. <laughs> Fantastic, awesome young man. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me this morning. I've really appreciated. I'm sorry that I've been on like um Red Bull times a thousand. Um, it's. Just like uh, <laughs> just it's all good and 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 i look forward to when the world does open up and having more conversations with you and saying how do we 
help more of those people in more of those places perform better. And there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with going, actually, the area that I choose is sport and performance. You know, I think it's perfect. You have to, you have to choose the places you go and work. And, 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 and then you can bring your full passion and your full excitement into it.